Sicily's a weird place. It's it's a very confusing, right? I mean, for for many people, we really don't. Most people don't know Sicily very well. No, we 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 know a lot of Sicilian Americans. A lot, and you yeah. know the 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 and and they don't the call themselves Italian Americans. They're not. You know, they're, this this is, they're Sicilian. At least people probably we know. call it right. Yeah, but uh, this is a land that hardly considers itself Italian. A land that's been conquered, conquered How and many reconquered. Times? I mean, just t- change hands and change hands and change hands. And I feel like our understanding of it is I feel I feel like the narrative of Sicily is very poorly communicated. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, whether you're watching, you know, I mean, you've seen it even in Bourdain. I mean, people have a very hard time doing the complexity of Sicily justice. Yeah. We almost view it as a one-dimensional, you know, land of the Godfather. Meanwhile, I mean, look, this is a very interesting wine that we're having. I mean, with Arabic roots, uh, uh, you know. And Spanish and French and, and it's Greek. A, and it's a rosé, for God's sakes. It's like, a rosé. I, I don't think I even knew Sicily made rosé. And yet they do. I like that we're, we're trying to, you know, wipe the dust off of Sicily and, and try to understand it a little bit better. I think that's really interesting. Sicily is absolutely still to this day a misunderstood area. And let's do, let's do our best to, to shed a little bit of light, even if a little bit. Let's see if we can. Cheers. Cheers. What is up, Watch fam? Happy Friday and welcome to Liquor Run. I am Christian from Theo and Harris, and you are... Rolling <laughs> from Theo and Harris. Uh, it, is, it is quite cold outside. Uh, it is mid-May, but, uh, but it's a little bit chilly. So today we're going to be drinking something that might not be, you know, so uh, for this weather, right. but it's for the time of year. All right, so what are we drinking? We're drinking a Sicilian rosé today. Very cool. Hey, regaliali. I don't think I've had a Sicilian rosé before. You will today? I'm excited. Cool, so Let's before we do so, wristwatch check. What do you got? I've got a vintage uh, Tudor. Uh, it's called a York. York, yeah. It, yeah. Uh, I was telling you, it, it's, uh, it was made for like this collection called uh, 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 English Cities. So there was the York, there was the London, there were a couple of different examples. They're very, very rare watches. Uh, this dial is actually radium, which is like, you know, almost unheard of as far as originality in vintage watches. Uh, you just don't find it. You know, I mean, a radium dial. It was a right. very, very controversial, you know, piece of technology sure. that was eventually replaced. Uh, so anyway, I think it's very cool. Um, you know, no one really contends that it's dangerous to, you know, to wear, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it, people are paranoid. My testicles but, are glowing already. <laughs> That watch was actually the focus uh, of a video we released yesterday on TheoAndHarris.com uh, called Lug to Lug. So we went in depth with this watch, told you the entire history of it, all the dimensions, all the specs, what to wear it with, and, and really went in depth. So if you haven't like already, uh, check out that video. And if you guys haven't already, check out uh, Lug to Lug. So uh, that's it. I'm wearing a, uh, a vintage uh, yellow gold Rolex Day Date. This watch was sourced for a client out in California, uh, and it, 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 this is a this is a pleasure for me to wear. I think that they're such a funny looking watch. I think it's so ironic. Uh, this is a watch for a, a retiree, yeah. and and I've hardly started, so Absolutely. I think that it's kind of fun wearing it. You know, I can see, uh, you know, being on the conga line of Century <laughs> Village, Florida. Uh, all right, so let's get into this uh, regaliale. What is it? Rega- regaliale. Regaliale. Cool. Let's do it. So you said before, you know, Sicilian rosés. Haven't had Sicilians one. drink rosés. Okay. They drink rosés in okay. the summertime. Cool. And regaliale is a massive producer of wine. Cool. In Sicily. Cool. So we've got a very reputable producer. Mm -hmm. We've got a producer that's widely available. Okay. And it's being uh, imported by none other than Leonardo Locasio. I've heard that name a dozen times. That's very important to this wine. And you're a big fan of, of following importers, right? Yes. It's almost like, right, it's almost like they, they, obviously, if they're putting their name on this and you trust their name, and even if you don't know the wine, you'll take a shot. Great importers bring great wines. Yep. You look at Locasio, you look at uh, um, Jorge Ordonez. Jorge Ordonez, yeah. for, if you look at Spain. Spanish wines. Yeah. You look at uh, Michael Skernick, Thierry Thies. Serious people. Serious people. Important okay, and, and there are others that I can go on and on about that are just so committed to bringing in not only the big guys, but also the small producers. Really high quality. Really high quality. I love that. But so, so as you take this journey with us on Liquor Run, Always look at the bottle, examine the bottle, and in this case, this is probably the second time, maybe the third, we've purchased the bottle of Leonardo Locasio wines. So it's a sign, it's a, it's a, it's a sign of quality. They, they stand behind the wines they bring in. Let's crack let's, it uh, open. Let's, uh, let's yak in more drinking. <laughs> I was going to think we going to go with cracking. Okay, so tell me, have you had uh, wine by this producer before? I have, I have, I've had the Nero de Avola. Okay. Okay, and that's the, the, uh, 
the the indigenous grape okay uh, of of that area of of, um, of southern Italy gotcha okay and what is Tosca Tosca is I would consider like a vineyard oh okay yeah like a, like a winery okay cool mm -hmm. let's pour it out unlike Tosca in Spanish which is almost like a tapas crawl when you go to a Tosca, Tosca you're yeah. getting beer you're getting vermouth interesting yeah the, the so color it's a, it's is shocking question. man. Yeah, so the color. Wow, it's so unlike. So, yeah, then, this you, you're talking salmon. That's right. Salmon. It's not as much okay. of a rose. It's not. Yeah, and and not a farm raised salmon, but a wild salmon color. It's so funny, right? man. What King a salmon color. Coho salmon. Yeah. All right. So it's got a beautiful, beautiful color. Yeah, absolutely. Right? What Let's are you gonna see. expect in the nose? Are you expecting a lot or just a little? I guess we'll, well find out. I mean, we'll find out. So this one is made from uh, Nerello Mascalesi. Is the grape. Okay, that's an indigenous grape to uh, to Sicily. Okay, and um, uh, I don't know what to expect. All right, let's so let's let's give, uh, give it a sniff. Yeah. What are you getting? What are you? I'm getting like a sour cherry kind of kind of smell, and I don't know if that's crazy. The fact that I'm telling you that it smells like a sour cherry versus a sour cherry so, by yeah, taste. That's so. What what, but, is, but, what is a sour but, cherry uh, taste yeah, like? That's so funny. Yeah. I mean, but I just, I just, ima you know, I, I just remember having sensory a sensory recall. Yeah, yeah where, where, I where. I love that. But for me, it, for me, it's definitely like a, a, a berry-like uh, uh, aroma. Mm -hmm. Let's try it, though. Let's give it a shot. Oh, man, and it's packed with berries. Ooh! Man, Tasty. strawberry, like ripe strawberries, ripe cherries. Even, even, even like a darker fruit, even like a like a like a blueberry kind of, or, or blackberry, like just a slightly ripe blackberry, where you have you have a firm acidity, but you still have got that fruit. Blackberry, right? Yeah, that's the one. Very very tasty. It really is. I, I, I yeah. It's first of all, it's, first of all, it's delicious. It's very very tasty. It's it's funny. We pick up a lot of the same stuff, but you just have such a better. You're on the trigger, you know. Whereas it takes me just a little while longer. I mean, you when you just nailed blackberry there, and you're 100 percent right. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what else. What else? What else are you getting? Maybe you try try to try to help me out here. Help me get through this wine. So it's not an overly ripe fruit that I'm getting. It, it's more that root that that fruit that's getting to that ripeness. Where you still get you're getting the, the the residual sweetness, but there's still that little bit of acidic backbone to that mm -hmm. fruit. That's what I mean. So you know the fruit you're having. It's just that it's not quite there yet, and so you're getting a little bit of of, yeah. of, of the of the of the acid. And it almost alludes to it yeah. alludes mm -hmm. to a lot, mm -hmm. which makes it very difficult for someone like me who doesn't drink as much wine as he does to to, to grasp what it is that it's alluding to. Yeah. I think that's really what that's really a very interesting point you just made there. I like this wine because it has the lightness of a white wine, but it has the body of a red, so it'll hold it'll it'll hold up. To a variety of food. Yeah. You know, you can do fish with this wine. Yep. You can do chicken. Imagine doing a, a chicken on the spit. Oh, yeah. Okay. With that char. Or, or, yeah. or, or pork. Oof. Right? These Sicilians like uh, they'll, they'll eat yep. pork. Yeah. But you can do that with this. You can even go with a little sort of flavor yeah. and still match this wine. It's, it's really, really nice. T tell me more about, uh, about the maker. Tell me more about uh, 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 Regaliali. T tell me more. So, this is a big producer in Sicily. Like I said before, they do a lot. They do a lot of of uh, different wines. A lot of reds. Um, they do definitely the share of whites. They're known for their Nero Diavola. Okay. Okay, and uh, that's a principal grape there. I think I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the name comes from the Arabic Regaliali comes from the Arabic word Rahal Ali. Okay, what okay, is that? Which mean? means House of Ali. Ah. So isn't that cool? So when you make, yeah, so when, when we always say like Sicilians are so close to Arabs in a lot of ways, not, not you know, indirectly, but still in the roots. This is a good example of DNA. that root. Yeah, that's amazing, right? Yeah, the, the Greeks, the Spanish, okay. the Moors or, or, or the Muslims, right. they, they were in I there. The and they, maybe, there maybe the French too. too. I, I could be wrong. And, I, and be wrong. I, I wouldn't be surprised because you're dealing, you're in the Mediterranean where they, they had their imprint in Corsica. Mm -hmm. You know, they were pirates going back and forth. You know, yeah. trying to conquer. So it was conquest. Then you would lose, and they would reconquest. Yeah, so it was constantly an evolution. And so and each which, which, time, which, they would leave their imprint, which yielded ultimately what we know as Sicily. And that's what it is today. That's amazing. The fiery people. I'm I'm getting. I think that the more I try to taste it, and the more I really try to think about it, I'm really reaching that strawberry too. 
Uh, mm-hmm. It's light. It, it's mm-hmm. like I said, it's an illusion to strawberry, it, it definitely but it's is. there. It, it almost is. tastes like um, like almost like a like a frizzante di fragolina. Yes, you know what exactly. I mean? Like it has that's that. kind of what it yes. has. Like this <clears> this <throat> like uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. um, effervescent, yeah. light, light, light strawberry uh, drink. You know, and it's, it, I don't know, it just seems like something would be very refreshing that would be served, you know, in, like, so, somewhere like Sicily, on the water. It just reminds me of, of even a non-alcoholic beverage in, in a lot of ways, in, in, that, in that strawberry taste. Because that strawberry is played a lot in the non-alcoholic kind of realm of refreshing drinks in, in Europe, I think. Yes. You know, because we've had plenty of drinks that yeah. are just, you know, casual. This is tasty, though, man. This is, like what you said, I think you did a really nice job of, of explaining that. Obviously, it's a still wine, yep. so it doesn't have the effort. No, it doesn't. But it does. Don't you? Are you getting a little? Is it a minerality? What is it there that I'm that I'm getting? I mean, what it is, and that's a good pickup. Yeah. This this wine never touches oak. Okay. It's three months of stainless steel fermentation. So there you go. So it, it has maybe that, it's it, that steel. It, steel. It, it's, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's funny. Yeah. I think that what, what I what I love about what I love most about liquor on um it, really uh, hanging out with my dad and being able to drink wine, but I learn so much in this series it's like it's incredible right so I know that this whole idea that I've been I've been battling with this word effervescence for probably the past three or four months in liquor run and you guys have seen it many times where I where I will call something almost effervescent even though I know it's not I can I'm, I'm you know I'm not an idiot I can tell it's not but for some reason I always get that and this is at least the third or fourth time I've said that yes. and you have re-guided me into what that actually is yeah and I love I think that's so freaking interesting and now that you say it it tastes a lot more like almost the steel like coldness than yes, it does it effervescent. It's the coldness. I love that. Yes. That's so yes. interesting, man. Cheers yeah, to that. Cheers. First of yeah, all, I love it. How much was this bottle of wine? This bottle of wine was nine dollars. Nine bucks. Nine bucks. Very cool. And worth every dollar. Yeah. For nine dollars, you can't beat a wine like this. Mm-hmm. Again, you can go out. You can spend a lot more. There's yep. a, this this spectrum yep. of rosés today is wild, and and it's a great thing for all of us. Yep. Be it American, yep. be it be it Spanish, Italian, or French, and on and on and it's on, and even 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 maybe from from uh, from Australia, New Zealand, the spectrum is broad. But to be able to find yep. a wine for this price that will give you a hell of a lot of pleasure, yeah, that you can sit and, down and, and talk you, about, maybe not for hours, but that's it, right. for a little while. But it, that's so much yeah, fun to me. It's so much fun. Thank you, Dad, for showing me this wine. It's absolutely delicious. Seriously, I highly recommend it. If you can find this bottle of wine, is it readily available? Yes, it is. If you can find it at your local liquor shop, pick it up. And if not, take a screenshot of this right now on your iPhone and show it to your uh, show it to your wine guy and tell him you want a bottle. You want uh, it now. You, and you want a bottle and you want it now because it's the right time of year. Thank you guys so much again for watching uh, Liquor Run. Cheers. Uh, happy weekend. And if you did enjoy this wine pick and our watches, uh, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel in that, you know, right below. That's Subscribe. All right. Boom, watch fam.